Hello, beautiful people. My name is Neon362. Welcome back to Let's Play Miles After the Investigations. In the last episode, we have Tenero being the big witness or victim or killer or whatever we want to call them now. Uh, we are going to investigate the cargo hold at some point. I knew it had something to do with something and uh, suitcase, our suitcases. And in this episode, I have no idea what we're going to do. We're going to save and then we're going to see what else we can do. Um, something I forgot to mention last episode, I have a new microphone this one's not supposed to be as terrible as the last one i had i literally was using the apple microphone things but those have been broken for a couple of months now so these are actually supposed to be like gaming headsets turtle beach headsets and finally was able to buy them finally have some sort of visible ability to pay money now so let's go see what's gonna go on i actually have my timer ready now and let's Let's save and not save, or save and save. Let, let's not save, apparently. Okay, that works too. In lower deck cargo hold. Wow, so this is the cargo hold, huh? He seems like he's such having such a fun time. I like having fun times. What you guys do? So, Bing. Oh, big. Well, I don't know. It could be Bingy. I don't know. It could be like gold there somewhere. There's probably gold somewhere in here. This plane is a special model. It has both a super large cargo hold and ultra luxurious first class seating. Okay, so it's a really, really famous plane that I would love to be in. Okay. So is this the real scene of the murder? There is certainly a high probability of that, which is why we are here, correct? Okay, let's get investigating, sir. Okay, so let's investigate this stuff. Alright, let's go. First, uh, what is there a uh, suitcase here? What's with the suitcase, pal? It's what the victim checked in, sir. So this suitcase belongs to Mr. Hicks. I don't think he'd mind if we took a closer look. Oh no, he's already dead, so... There's nothing out of the ordinary in here, sir. Wait, file? And there's a photo of Miss Von Karma in it. Okay, how does he know exactly? Looks like a profile on Francisco. Why did... Yeah, that's what I was wondering. Why does he have a document of Francisco on here? Why Mr. Hicks have had a file on her? Why don't you ask her? Wait, can I actually talk to Francisco at all? You arrived, seen, before Detective Gumshoe, correct? And you then immediately began to invest, direct the investigation. It seems to me that you are already here at this airport for something besides this murder. Yes, I was. Alright, okay, yeah, I guess we have to talk to Francisca. I've been following a large and involved governmental level international crime. But it's much too large for one person to take on alone. So it was decided that I should form a joint investigation with Interpol. Okay, so I'm assuming Interpol is like that police thing we talked, we learned about with the Yatagarasu thing last time. Okay, so something else I have to talk about. I looked up what Yatagarasu is. I didn't, I forgot that there was a Yugi card talking about the exact same thing. I thought it was a thing that Miles Edgeworth, like the Capcom people made up. Apparently it's not. It's like supposed to be like a Japanese word for like a crow or like a dark black crow thing is what I figured out. And that made me feel like a complete idiot, because there's a freaking Yu-Gi-Oh card with a crow on it called, I don't even remember, Gift of Yatagarasu or something like that, and it lets you draw a card, and I was like, okay, now I'm freaking talking about Yu-Gi-Oh and Miles Edgeworth now, so let's just talk about Interpol. Interpol is involved. It's a top secret operation, so I can't really tell you any more than I already have. Okay, so I want to present... Was this guy in Interpol, actually? Was Hicks in Interpol? Is that why he had the um, stuff about Von Karma? What is the stuff about Von Karma? Whatever. It's not important. Oh, wait, it's logic. Okay. Hmm, what else is here? Keeping track of this many pieces of cargo must be very taxing on the cargo crew. This sure brings back memories of when I worked as a part time mover, sir. Oh, so you must be really powerful then. By the look in his eyes, he's waiting for me to ask about the rest of his story. <laughs> But no matter how he pours on his puppy eyes, I have no intention of doing so. Dang, dude. I would like to wonder how Gumshoe was a mover from a freaking detective. That would be a cool story. Capcom, you know what to do. Holy suitcases, Mr. Edward. It's like all you can use suitcase fare. These must be all the leftover ones they couldn't sell. The ones that company is planning to dispose of after the flight is over. Paint job is really cool, don't you think? It practically screams, artsy! I, uh, I would say more hideous. Oh, why not purchase one then? I'm sure it will bring you much happiness. <laughs> you think so? Then maybe I will. Let's see here. 
twelve hundred. <laughs> I think I'll pass. <laughs> and Mr. Nero wonders why they don't sell. You need two jobs just to buy one. Then again, this freaking airport, you know, it definitely looks like one is missing. What is this brittle substance I'm stepping on? It's a bunch of glass fragments. Wait a minute. Wait a minute, I noticed something. Could the glass shards be from the... Yep, they are! I think we can safely conclude that those fragments are from a pair of glasses. And the victim was wearing a pair of broken glasses. I wouldn't have, I probably wouldn't have noticed that since I already have glasses right here. So now I know I'm like a freaking expert on glasses. Exactly what I was thinking. I'm sure that the shards would match up perfectly with the remnants of his glass lens. Ergo, the victim was here, just as I expected. So you're saying that the real scene of the crime was here, sir? Isn't that what I've been saying for a while now? <laughs> Come, Shu, keep up! Oh, is it? I didn't know that. <laughs> Perhaps it's a bit early to draw that conclusion. However, I believe that the probability has just skyrocketed considerably. All that's left is to find the murder weapon. Yeah, we still have no idea. Can I, um... Sorry. Can I actually figure out if these work together? Yep. I had a feeling. Now, why would Mr. Hicks have a document profiling Francisca? Oh, I know. I bet he's a big fan of Miss On Karma. Who would be a fan of a whip? Actually, I would probably be a fan of a whip-loving prosecutor. We won't forget I ever said that. Francisca said that she had come to this airport as part of an Interpol investigation. Oh, maybe Mr. Hicks had heard she was coming here and he followed her. Detective, I think it's more likely that Mr. Hicks was, in fact, an actuality. Interpol Agent Hicks. Ooh. Yeah. I just noticed that I didn't have to do the stupid counter for a while. That's a good thing. I think Francisca had some explaining to do. You have some explaining to do. At least I think that's how the I Love Lucy thing went. I haven't watched... I had to watch, um... Freaking I Love Lucy for freaking Home Ec Alice. I have no idea why I had to do that. It was like not even a thing. It kind of reminded me of like the Drake and Josh episode where they had to like package sushi and stuff. Anyway, I'm deviating from like everything whatsoever. So let's learn about the truth. You came to this airport to rendezvous with the victim, didn't you? Nonsense! What are you talking about? We found a profile detailing information about you and the victim's luggage. I'm pretty sure if I was Francisca, I would, like, take that profile, considering it has my name on it. I suppose it was prepared for him so he could recognize you when he landed. Which makes him not Mr. Hicks, but rather Interpol Agent Hicks, isn't that correct? I should have known you'd figure it out, Miles. Then why didn't you take the profile? But it looks like they got to him first. So you really did come here to receive an Interpol agent, then? Yes. Agent Hicks was one of the five on the trail of a very large international smuggling ring. Isn't that what the Yatagarasu are? No, wait, those are thieves. Alright, thieves are smugglers. I don't remember, I have to watch my videos again. He went undercover to investigate this crime, and it was I who put him on this case. I was supposed to receive a call from him on his cell phone once he had landed. Oh, is that why he was talking about his cell phone so much? I think everything's coming together soon. I never expected to receive a call about his murder instead. Hmm. I think we now have a pretty definite evidence that Agent Hicks came down here to the cargo hold. But what is he doing down here, sir? There's nothing but luggage. Oh, I get it. Maybe he forgot something in his suitcase and came down to get it. He couldn't have done that, though! <laughs> that works, too! Agent Hicks came here for a work-related reason. Of that, I am sure. Yes, I'm sure he was here to investigate the smuggling operation he was observing. Francisca, do you know exactly how he intended to pursue his investigation? No. Unfortunately, I was going to find out that from him after he landed. I see. But this raises another question. Normal passenger can't access the cargo hold on their own. That's what I was wondering, so that makes Gung Chu being an idiot. An idiot. Agent Hicks must have identified himself to a member of the crew and entered the cargo hold with that person who let him in. So whoever that crew member was killed him! But we don't know who the crew member was, and it looks like Tanero was a crew member. Yes, and then he was murdered here. 
These glass fragments and his broken glasses are a testament to that. And then... The killer put Agent Hicks into one of the spare suitcases and... They entered the elevator, but while they were riding it up... The turbulence happened! Because of the intense shaking, the suitcase popped open and Agent Hicks' body flew out. At the same time, his wallet fell out of his pocket, spilling its contents everywhere. Which explains why there was money scattered all over the elevator floor. Well, that's you good enough, but we still haven't proven that Tanero wasn't the one who did that. I think it's pretty easy to say who the culprit is at this stage. What? Really, sir? I like how he calls um Von Karma, sir. Just makes me feel like Gumshoe is just more of an idiot than he really is. I know what you're thinking, Miles Edgeworth. But the killer can be none other than Miss Rhoda Tenero. Oh boy, yay! This is what I want to see. If it was a crew member, any of them could have shown Agent Hicks to the cargo hold. But the point to keep in mind is the keycard that allows the elevator to come down here. The only person with such a high level access is Miss Rhoda Tenero. I'd say that's a pretty decisive piece of information, wouldn't you? But the Nero lost it, right? I know what she's trying to say, but I'm not certain it's as simple as that. Hmm. Alright, so I have no idea what I'm gonna hit. Hmm. Hold it. What's about this part? But it's highly likely the keycard was stolen. It's highly likely? Is that possibility the best you can come up with? And you call yourself a disciple of my father. Thanks! Yes, well, while I don't have any evidence, I... Be quiet! You're a disgrace! There's more evidence pointing to Mr. Adetanero, you know. It's not just a keycard that gives her away. Are you talking about the murder weapon, the iFly piggy bank? Yes, she's also the only person with the key to open that display case. Okay, I guess that makes sense then. There's the matter of the key... Oh, uh, this part wasn't there before. But that is a fake. Stop right there, Mazat. Oh, the music stopped. You don't have any proof that this is just a red herring? If you have to keep on insisting that's a fake, then what is the real murder weapon and where did it go? Oh yeah, we have no idea where it went. Speechless, I see. That's not a surprise. After all, you know that we've searched the entire cargo hold and came up empty-handed. There must be a way. There must be something that can help you rule out the piggy bank as the murder weapon. What should be examined further to help us attain the authenticity of the weapon? Okay, so um, I guess I'm pretty sure it might be the body, but we'll figure out next episode because I'm running out of time. So this is Neon362 welcoming you to this thing which I'm ending right now. So I hope to see you next time. This is Neon332 signing off.